In this video, I'll talk a little bit about lattice energy of ionic compounds. And I'll define that, but then I'll also go through an example of finding the lattice energy of table salt. So lattice energy, that is the change in enthalpy, or the en energy required, to take one mole of an ionic compound, and our example is salt, NaCl, or sodium chloride, and completely make that into the gaseous ions. So Na plus and Cl minus. So it takes some energy to do that, to take table salt and, and break it apart into all of these just ions now. So the way we find that, that lattice energy, is by going through a Born-Haber cycle. The Born-Haber which could be an exciting movie, the born Haber cycle, not the born identity, born supremacy, born Haber cycle, all these chemists. Okay, born Haber cycle. Now, it walks through step by step what's going through in the, the formation of uh, sodium chloride. So if you take sodium as a solid and then mix that with a half a mole of the Cl2 gas, well, you are going to get, in return, NaCl as a solid. Now, I know I've balanced this without an integer, and that's because we're talking about heat of formation per mole, and so I wanted to leave this uh, NaCl as just one mole. So, this, this uh, change in enthalpy that happens right here, let's put an, a yellow arrow here to, to really specify that this is a special step. This is the delta H sub F. That's our heat of formation that is given to us. And it's exothermic. It gives off, uh, this formation gives off to its surrounding, to, to the surroundings, uh, 411 kilojoules per mole. Now, what happens uh, to do all this, to, to go from a solid sodium to and a chlorine gas to, to table salt. Well, there's a lot that goes on. And now the Born-Haber cycle doesn't show it in, in necessarily the correct order because these things happen uh, in, in various ways, but it breaks it down for us. So first of all, we have to sublime the, the sodium. That is, we're going to turn it into a gas, and, and that's sublimation. So it's passing, it's skipping over the, the liquid. It's just going right from a solid state to a gas. And that has some uh, change in enthalpy associated with it. So I'll write here, sodium sublimation, and we'll call that delta H sub 1. So it's one of the change in enthalpies that we have to worry about. And as a result, we'd get sodium as a gas. We also want to dissociate the Cl2 molecules. So I'll say Cl dissociation. And I'll call that change in enthalpy, or delta H sub 2. So. I don't, n now I, I don't just have um, Cl2 molecules, I have just Cl atoms. So I've dissociated that. Okay, so we've got two changed in enthalpies to worry about here. Next, how about turning the, um, the sodium gas into an ion? Well, that's the ionization energy, so sodium ionization. So the ionization energy we'll call delta H sub 3, and you get Na plus, and that's in gaseous state. You also have, have to add an electron to the chlorine atom. So you'll get, in the end, Cl minus in the gaseous state. Well, adding an electron has a change in enthalpy that is exactly the opposite of the electron affinity of the particular atom. So, 
because instead of uh, losing an atom you're, or an, a, an electron, you're, you're gaining one. So I'll say that is the opposite of, signaled by that negative sign, the electron affinity. And then I'll give that a corresponding change in enthalpy, sub 4. How about that? Now, look at this. This is interesting because this is what we want in the end, is what we see in green there. But we don't want to go in this direction. We want the energy to go in, or how much energy it takes to go in the other direction, right? So, so what I have in light green here would be the lattice energy going from NaCl solid to, uh, to the ions. So this would be the lattice energy in in that up direction but we we don't have that yet what we do what we can calculate is the the blue arrow and then we'll just say the the negative of that the opposite of that so I'll say delta H sub 5 is the opposite of the lattice energy so we will solve for delta sub 5 and then just say the opposite of that is the lattice energy. Now, how do we how do we find all this? Well, we're going to add all this up. The heat of formation going in the yellow the yellow step equals necessarily does equal the sum of all of these other uh, delta H, all these other change in enthalpies. So, I will say the heat of formation equals delta H sub 1 plus delta H sub 2 plus delta H sub 3 plus delta H sub 4 plus our mystery delta H sub 5. We're going to solve for that. We do have all the other deltas. And, and I'll, I'll give them to you right here. Okay, delta H sub 1. That is the, the sublimation. It's given to us right here. So I'll say delta H sub 1 equals 108 kilojoules per mole. Delta H sub 2. Delta H sub 2 is the dissociation. And uh, that is given to us right here. And luckily it's given to us, well, coincidentally, it's given to us. Uh, is a, for a half a mole, a half a mole of Cl2 into Cl atoms is 121.4 kilojoules. So that's, that's this right here. So that is 121.4 kilojoules per mole. Delta H sub 3 is our ionization, the ionization energy. Now I had to look this up. Uh, it's not given to us in the problem, but you can find it in a table. And the ionization energy for a mole of, of sodium is 495.9 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So we have that. Oh, by the way, I, if you're wondering about this, this half a mole business... Uh, 121.4 kilojoules per mole to keep all the units straight. That's because we ended with a mole of Cl. So for the delta H sub 2, just so you know that I'm, we're, we're doing this correctly. Okay, uh, delta H sub 4, that is the, the opposite of the electron affinity. Another thing that I had to just look up on a table, uh, and that happens to be negative. Well, the electron affinity is positive for chlorine. The electron affinity is positive, but we're doing the opposite of that. So delta H sub 4 is negative 349 kilojoules per mole. We also have delta H sub 5. We don't know what that is. Add all those up, and that should equal the heat of formation, which is equal, which is given to us as negative 411 kilojoules per mole and all you have to do is, is solve for the unknown there so that's this right here and you get delta H let's change color so you can 
this really stands out for you. Delta H sub 5 equals negative 787.3 kilojoules per mole. But, but wait a minute, that's not our answer because remember, H sub 5 is the opposite of the lattice energy. So we're going to take the opposite of this number to find or to give us our answer of lattice energy. So the lattice energy for table salt, that is how much energy would you have to add to table salt? You're going to give it some energy is 787.3 kilojoules per mole. And you think about if you're unsure of the sign, it's always nice to just pause for a second and, and think about it. Uh, yes, it makes sense that we would have to put energy into table salt to to make it turn into these gaseous ions. So it should be positive. We're, we're adding energy to the system. That was a wonderful. I, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, I would love to see a movie. The Bornhaber Cycle next. So if you found this video helpful or if you'd like to make the Bornhaber Cycle movie, please consider liking this video or sharing it with a friend.